Hello, my name is Scott Savage. I am the Alabama State Director for American Atheist, and I would like to talk to you today about the historical history of Christianity. Now, that title might sound redundant, but it has an important distinction. How can anyone forget the stories of Jesus Christ? The feeding of the 5,000 with just five loaves of bread and two fish? Or Jesus at the Sea of Galilee, where a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs which he performed? Or the raising of Lazarus from the dead, where many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary had seen what Jesus did and believed in him? Or Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, which took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet? Anyone ever noticed this cult before? We'll get to him in a minute. The Gospel of Luke states, And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The Gospel of Mark states, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. And the Gospel of Matthew states, And the fame hereof went abroad into all that land. Thus we have the beginning of the spreading of the good news of Jesus Christ, starting at the year 1 A.D. And right there at the beginning were three wise men who spent weeks following a star in the east to worship the newly arrived Messiah. The Gospel of Matthew quotes them as saying, Where is he that is born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Which brings us to our first problem. When did the spreading of this good news actually start? Was it really 1 AD? Or should we move that date back to 4 BC? Because according to the writer of Matthew, Jesus was alive before King Herod died in 4 BC. The Gospel of Matthew states, An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. Or should we move that date ahead to 6 AD? Because according to the writer of Luke, Jesus was born after Cyrenius became governor in 6 AD. The Gospel of Luke states, There went a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, and this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city, and Joseph also went up from Galilee to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Alive in 4 BC, yet born in 6 AD, how can that be? Both of these stories cannot be true at the same time. Perhaps the historians of the day can tell us which of the two biblical authors was mistaken. After all, how could anyone miss a star that stayed in one place in the sky for weeks? Here's a list of the prominent historians, philosophers, poets, and scientists that would have been contemporary to Jesus' life. They wrote on politics and religion and even recorded every single geological event of the time. Yet, every single one failed to mention the star that announced Jesus' arrival, or the earthquake that accompanied his death, or even Jesus himself. It's almost as if Jesus of Nazareth never existed at all. But there are historians that mention Jesus. Josephus mentions him as early as 70. And Pliny the Younger does so in 112. And Tacticus in 115. But it's curious that these historians are constantly being trotted out by Christian apologists as historians were contemporary to Jesus Christ it's curious because not one of them lived at the time of Christ. Which means they were only repeating what Christians were telling them. 
Let's take a look at their writings and see what they had to say. Josephus said people called him the Christ. Pliny the Younger said they affirmed. Tacticus said those whom. Well, there is one thing that history confirms. There were, in fact, Christians living as early as 70 AD. But this is kind of puzzling. Were there no Christians living at the time of Christ for the contemporary historians to write about? To solve this puzzle, let's look at the historical documents of Christianity. Jesus first shows up in history sometime around the year 49 AD in Paul's letter to the churches of Galatia. Paul's letter begins, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised... Uh, okay, big intro to the letter. But when he gets to the meat of the subject, he says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that call you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So there it is. The first time that Jesus Christ shows up in history is in a letter from Paul chastising people for not worshiping Jesus Christ. Moving along, we see that the Gospels were written shortly after Paul began writing of Jesus. Let's take another look at how the historians fit into the picture. As we can see, historians didn't start writing about Christianity until after Paul started converting people to Christianity. So what happened to the multitudes we've heard so much about? Well, the first time the multitudes show up in history is when Paul writes his stories about them. Did the history of Christianity really start around 1 AD? Or did it start around the year 49? If it started around 49, then there's something on this chart that's not necessary for Christianity to start. Could this be the true history of Christianity? Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that no serious scholar thinks that Jesus is a myth. You're thinking, well, the prophecies. Jesus fulfilled the prophecies. What about the 500 that witnessed his resurrection? What about the Jewish historians that wrote about Jesus? What about the empty tomb? Well, as with any other hypothesis, we should try very hard to falsify the idea that Jesus was a myth. We should also allow the idea to be peer-reviewed. And we should throw that idea out if anyone can falsify it. And we'll be doing just that in part two of the series.